Good morning, virtual villagers. Hi, I'm Kate from What Kate Made. Welcome to my session this morning. Uh, gearing up for Valentine's Day. I hope you're all ready for, for Wednesday. Um, I'm going to show you today a way of uh, creating your own gift box. Um, we're going to be using a method called decoupage, which is very old and um, Victorians used it a lot. Today, we tend to do a lot of decoupage with paper napkins, um, like this kind of thing, which you then peel layers apart and you just use the top coloured layer. Um, originally, it was done with, um, not as much with light tissue like that, but more with um, patterned papers cut into shapes, motifs cut out, layered up, and then sort of varnished over the top. So. Um, that's what we're going to do today we're going to use some tissue but we're going to mostly concentrate on different papers and cards uh, in, in cut out into heart shapes and then layered up so um please forgive me if i'm a bit croaky i'm just at the tail end of a cold um i do have your comments showing so if you want to wave and say hi tell me where you are what, what your weather's like we've got a bo really bonny day today so what we'll need the basics of one well, now one thing i do like about this kind these uh, decoupage boxes is you can reuse a whole load of gift boxes to, you know boxes you get toiletries in uh, sometimes they'll have a brand name on or the pattern or the colour won't be quite what you want but you can change that and you can reuse a really nice sturdy box now um, this the one I'm going to show you now it, it has been it is a gift box it's got a gold lining uh, which I've decided to leave in because that's quite nice and I probably couldn't replicate that myself um, what I've done is give it a coat of just white acrylic paint. That just gives you a nice base. If you were going for darker colours, um, I'd give it a dark base. But this just helps. So that's my upcycled gift box, um, painted white. So that's what I'm going to use. So it's a good idea so you can get rid of any branding on it and then a nice sturdy box. I'm also going to use, um, I said that, it, tissue paper is the thing. This is a special a decoupage tissue paper. You can either use the paper napkins, but I liked this one because it's quite modern, and I want to give a quite a modern take to my um, my gift box. So it's got three patches, and I was thinking three three different patterns on it. And I was thinking what I'm thinking is of doing stripes. So taking a putting a length horizontally across this so that you've got all three patterns on it. So, but we'll get to that later. So that's my base paper. For my for the embellishment on it, I've uh, I was a little bit late sending off my heart template to to the um, village hall, but um, I've got various shapes, heart shapes in different sizes. Um, I have a template that I printed out on card, and then I cut them out just because card lasts longer. Some of these are laminated as well. It just helps keep make them last longer um, because I reuse them over and over again. So there's lots and lots of different sizes from like the big one down to the little ones. Um, the ones I'm going to be using are the smaller ones on the on the card. So I've got these two. Um, I've already cut out some various hearts in different patterned papers. Um, some red shiny ones. I'm gonna. I will do a couple more. As we go, I'm going to want to put some gold on this as well, I think. What else have I got? All right, the glue. Now, the glue we're using today is PVA glue. And for decoupage, you water it down half and half. So half glue, half water. And I always keep one in a spare bottle ready diluted because they do quite a bit of decoupage. Uh, what else have we got here? We've got some washi tapes. Um, these are quite nice. These are... It's a Japanese thing, washi tape. It's just a decorative paper tape. Um, there isn't any red ones in here, but I'm going to be using some of these. Oops, sorry, I didn't black and white ones later. I want to show you two two different boxes today. Um, what else have I got in here? I have got some sort of pink washi tape with hearts on, but I don't know whether I'll use that. Um, right, so the other thing that is you need a sponge brush with your glue. That it's just because they they work better. They spread really evenly. I use this to paint my box as well. Um, 
and they're just washable. So rather than getting glue all over a nice a nice paintbrush. I've got a few ribbons here, um, but you'll see things as we go along. It's mostly paper and tape. Um, I, I do have a, this is my disappearing gel pen that I use to draw out my heart so that I can then get rid of the lines. If But usually I'm drawing on the back of the card. So uh, I've got some 3D tape. This is a, a sponge double-sided tape and it's really useful for giving a little bit of a layered effect, a little bit more depth to your uh, your embellishments. I have got a couple of other things I wanted to show you. These these are wood. I got these ages ago. Um, you can see how thick they are. But sometimes it's nice to put something that's just a bit more chunky on, particularly if it's if it's for a man you're making it for. Um, I think that's everything we're going to need. If we come across anything else, then I'll explain what it is as we go along. So, first thing we're going to do is cover our box because it needs to dry. Um, I've got my secret weapon. I've got an old hairdryer in my kit that I use for drying paint and, and glue and stuff when I wanted to move on to the next stage. Okay, so let me just turn the camera down so I can do that without dropping everybody. I'll just bring you a little bit closer. No, further away, because I want to get you to be able to see my whole workspace. There we go. Right, so our box, white painted. I've got a little pot here, and I'm going to pour in my watered down PVA. So that's half PVA, half water. If I can get into it. A long time since I've used this, that so might have seized up a little bit. So I'm going to pop a generous amount of that into my um, little bowl. This is just a little get a dip in it the container we're going to do the two pieces of the box separately so i'll start with the lid same principle um i want you to be able to see what i'm doing so I'm, i said i was going to cut this across um and now when i'm looking at it i'm thinking for the lid i might just use one so we'll we'll start with the base and i'm going to see if this will wrap all the way around like a present because that will make life, life just a little bit easier you don't have to do it like this i think this this paper oh look at that exactly is lending itself to it because of the way it is is there uh, in these three sections just let me get some big scissors But if you want a more random effect, you could just um, tear the paper into little patches or you could um, cut it into shapes and then sort of like almost collage them on. Now, we might struggle with this just on the corners. What I'm going to do is cut about half centimetre seam allowance, if you like, so we can we can go underneath. Now, this um, first bit I'm cutting with the gingham pattern on it does make life very easy. Because this has got very regular shapes, cutting a nice straight line is very easy. So I'm going to cut a long, wide strip of this. Okay. So this is for the body of the box. I think when I do the top, I might tear it into strips, and that will give it a nice sort of softened edge. The decoupage part, excuse me, sniffing, I told you I had a cold. You just want to, I'm going to do the sides first, put a thin layer of your watered down PVA and take your strip of paper and lay it onto the box, covering right up to the top and then just gently smooth it out and it will wet it will wrinkle because the wet glue will make the tissue wrinkle a little bit and then we're just going to fold that end under so what you might want to do is just put a little bit more pva just along the edge there to hold that edge down and just smooth it over and get a nice sharp corner 
sorry, I'm, I'm very sniffy. I'm aware I'm sniffing a lot. If you just excuse me while I just grab a tissue. Oh dear, it's been a horrible, horrible cold. Um, right, so we're going to do the same on all the sides. I'm being quite ungenerous with the glue because I'm a, one thing you've got to be really careful of with tissue paper, which I'm sure you'll be aware, is that it can um, tear very easily when it gets wet. Now, what I'm going to do, I'll show you the bottom end. I'm going to stick this from the top down. It has moved a little bit. And then worry about the bottom because I will put another piece of paper all over the bottom. So that'll cover up the joins. But as you can see, that has actually joined very nicely. Little bit of glue under that top edge. I'll just hold that. And we're just going to keep going around. So this is the same principle of sticking and gluing. Whether you use the tissue paper, the separated napkin, um, it's gone slightly off kilter because it's it's showing the edge a little bit, but that's where the washi tape comes in. So I'm going to carry on with that edge, and it should it has just come all the way around now. When you're joining at the edge, I'm going to just smooth that down, but I'm not going to I'm not going to take it over the edge. I'm going to see how well it fits, and then I'm going to crease it along the side. I hope you can hear me. I'm sorry, I'm very croaky, and then just trim it along there. What I don't want is that is one pattern bleeding over into the other. So now I'm using my, I used my big scissors before. These are my little sharp pointy scissors, which are always very handy. It's bled over a little bit, but not much. So now we've got our box covered on four sides with our nice um, checkered spotted paper. I am just going to fold down these, these side bits onto the bottom I'm going to tuck that under slightly so I've got like a a mitered corner so that's the bottom of our box and as I say I'm going to cover this although saying that that that's quite neat that's much neater than normal what I might do is decorate that with some hearts then later so I have ended up with a little bit of a bobble there I don't know why but that's my box, my basic decoupaged box. I think that's quite attractive. I like that. Quite nice and fresh. I wanted something fresh and modern. Right. So with the lid, I think what I'm going to do is, as I said, I'm going to tear um, the, the same papers, but I'm going to tear it into sort of ragged strips and maybe do them diagonally across. So I'll start by doing that. Um, I think if I tear, try and tear all the way along, I'm sure that somebody will say there's a better way of doing this. I'm never very confident tearing. <laughs> right, so what I've got is on my tear, torn strip a bit of every pattern, and I will just snip it because I can't resist a bit of order right I'll need a few more strips so let me just tear some off now I've got two raggy edges it's going to look a little bit better you can um with tissue paper you can wet I'll show you oh I don't think I've got any water but you can draw a line and then it sort of eases apart rather than being a sharp drag, a sharp edge, you get a sort of um, frayed edge or not frayed, I don't think that's what I meant. Um, a kind of see, I'm resisting the urge to crease it and tear it because I know then I'll get a straight edge. But 
I'm just going to carry on. I'll do another one. I think that might be enough to cover this box. We're not getting anybody um, saying hello. You are out there, aren't you? Lots of little likes are popping up, but nobody's actually brave enough to say hello to me today. They're probably frightened to catch my cold. And it's a good job you're not actually in the room with me. I think I've infected my husband. So I shall just tear those off. Some of these are quite big, but we can layer them up. That's the beauty of, of decoupage. Is that you can layer it up and it doesn't look bulky because it's very. this is very fine tissue paper. I think I might have enough there. Right, so my box lid, same principle, using your watered down PVA and I'm going to just stroke it across. It may dry slightly as we're moving the uh, the paper around but I'm, and I'm going to put it on the edge so that I can go right over the edge and then I'll trim all the um, ragged edges off. Right, so then we just start layering. And try and keep the glue off your hands before you touch the paper because you get um I just I've just found out you get quite um gluey and then all the paper sticks to you. So what we want to do is let me stand this up and get this back over there. I want to go diagonally. So I'm going to start by um taking it so that it needs to be over the edge. This is a difficult it's all sticking to me. I want to start at the corner there like that. It needs to be over the edge of the box like that so that I can cut it later. Can you see? And then same there. Okay. We can fill in these bits as we go. So that's my first corner. Then I want to choose a different pattern and overlay it. And I'm sticking with the shorter, thinner ones um, just at this point, just because. Um, I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, the longer ones, the thicker ones will be better in the middle. There we go. So I'm just, con where they're overlapping, they're not really um, sticking. So what I'm going to do is go over the top with the glue because that does help stick it down. And if you're careful with your brush, you won't um, tear the paper. So let's put a bit of the uh, gingham. Keep smoothing it as I go. I'm trying not to go spot stripe gingham because that's something I, I, t I do have a tendency to do. Um, so, but it might end up like that. I'm going to put this this bigger bit of. Um, the spot and because I want to go right across the box I'm going to tear it in half again and make a thinner stripe I may not go all the way to this corner I may leave a patch in this corner where I can put a nice embellishment oh people have woken up <laughs> Hello, Jilly. Hello, Pippa. And hello, Maureen and Anna, all joining us this morning. I hope you're enjoying this. And what? Again, got the stripe. That's quite a. It's not going to go all the way, you see. So I'm going to have to piece it. Right. I think I've decided to leave that corner blank for my embellishment so my I need to just put another bit of stripe there so we can add that bit in it's not coming right around the corner so I'm just going to fold that over there right so that's very sticky um I'm just going to give that a quick blast with the hairdryer to dry the glue because I want to trim it and then add some more bits on. So here's my very old hairdryer. And nothing switched on, bear with me a minute. There we go. And I'm just going to, oh, I think I'll do it 
this way a little bit just because I'm I'm blowing all my tissue paper everywhere. And all that's doing is sort of giving the glue a bit of a boost to dry. So we'll leave the edges for now because they are going to um, dry out very quickly. I'm going to pop that there um, and we'll start with the embellishments. Now I want to, in this corner, put a nice layered up heart. Um, I've got some uh, little hearts already cut out in various colours, but I want to really want to go with the red. So I'm going to look through what I've got. So I've got I might have some gold. I've got some gold. I've got some shiny red, quite like that one. That's quite a big one. That might start there. And we want to stick with the red and white. So, among my um, papers, I've got this nice red design, which has also got spots on the back. So, I have got a heart that's cut out with that paper. So, I'm going to maybe use the spot side. You can just see, I don't know if you can just see, but it's got tiny blue marks from my gel pen. This is lovely. You just rub it with the rubber that's on the end of the um, pen. And the friction, the heat from the friction gets rid of the pen marks. So now they haven't, I don't know if you can see, but now they've disappeared. Sorry for sniffing. So um, let's have a think. I'll bring my box back so you can see. I quite like that lid there, that um, big red heart, shiny heart. So I'm going to go with that, but I want to make a feature out of it by adding some other layers. Um, I have some gold shiny card somewhere. find it now this is I knew this was gonna happen this morning because I'm half half asleep maybe not go with gold then we'll maybe go with the layers of red and uh, spots so that's the heart I'm gonna use that's a big one I want to do one that's sort of in between size can you see the difference because I want to have layers and then I have a smaller heart as well so I can use three hearts laid up together like that I want to put um a layer of oh there's my gold I'm not sure if I want to use gold because of the white on the paper so what I may do is use um white and red sorry i'm looking for another paper with a white pattern that's quite nice i don't know whether that goes with the um what i'm using let me have a look i have quite a lot of little I have quite a lot of Valentine's papers, so that's quite a nice one. Uh, maybe we'll go with that one, although it has a bit of pink in it. What do you think? Yeah, I'll go with that one. And I'm going to cut out my mid-sized heart. So I'll cut it out, draw it on, on from the back. Excuse me. I'm trying not to do a full blown nose blow <laughs> on them um, on video. So when I cut out 
paper. I tend to move the paper rather than the, the blades. I find you get a much, if you just slowly close your scissor blades together and move the paper through it, particularly with curves, you get a much smoother edge. So that's one of those. And I've got that. I'm, I'm trying to think of, of uh, a nice arrangement for them. I might just go with that. Okay, so back to our box. And my base heart is going to be this big red shiny one. And I'm going to stick that flat. And after that, I'm going to layer them up with the um, 3D uh, tape. So I'm just spreading some more glue on. And I'm going to place that so. And then I'm going to get my foam tape. Put everything down. I can't find anything now. There it is. Now this just, um, you can just cut this into a little square and it's double sided and the next layer I'm going to put on my heart is going to be the um, one I just cut out there. So what I'm going to do is pop these little squares of 3D foam on. So this is another method that's quite often used for decoupage of a, the 3D effect. You can cut out, if you have a, a pattern paper with a repeating motif, um, if you cut out various elements of the motif, you can layer them up so you get a 3D effect of the same motif um, with different elements at different heights. So I'm just peeling off the little backing strip on these little foam pieces. They don't want to come off, and I have no nails. There we go. So then, carefully centre it. I'm not very good at this. And when your hearts have been cut out by hand, they can be slightly different shape. There we go. So I place that on. So it's got a nice even edge of the smaller of the bigger heart underneath. And then I'm gonna go with, um, I think that might be the same size. It is. I'm gonna go with the um, the red pattern. I'm not gonna use the spotty side, but I'm gonna do the same with that and I'm gonna layer it. I'll just put two spots on it um to just give it that little bit of height i like decoupage um i particularly like the fact that you can use it to, you can use it to cover up um patterns on other things that makes them more reusable like i was saying before about a um a gift box that a nice box that toiletries have come in, but it's got the manufacturer's name on it or it's got, you know, a present from mum or something like that. It is nice to um, re be able to reuse them because they're good boxes. Now, what I'm going to do now is this is dried. So I'm going to trim. Um, lots of my glue scissors. Close to the edge. All these edges off that are, are hanging over. So carefully just trim along the edge of your box. Okay. So now we've got a neater edge, but we've still got our stripes. Now, what we can do now, we can decide, do we want to leave our edge blank? Or not blank, but with the, the pattern on, or do we want to... Um, because we've got the other edges where we haven't put paper. Do we want to go around it with a ribbon? Um, and I am tending towards ribbon at the moment. I'm just going to see. I have this lovely red ribbon. 
I don't know whether it's enough to, it's red velvet, it's not long enough to go all the way around, so I might leave that for now. Come back to that, maybe use some of our washi tape. But I'm just going to try and trim these edges so that they are nice and smooth. So that's our lid decorated. I'm really pleased with that. What you can do if you want is write a name on. One thing I did want to show you with the decoupage, um, I have some of these little, it doesn't have to be boxes that you decoupage. These are little wooden tags that I bought at Christmas. Now, for instance, you could decoupage this. Well, give it a quarter of PVA. Take our spotty, place that on, on the wrong side and smooth it from that side so we go right around the edges and then what we can do is cut it cut it or tear it so that we're going right around the edge of the paper And this is a good way of using up all the little odds and ends that you had. Now, what I could do on that is put a plain heart on it. Um, I should have got some white card out. I'm going to use one of these upside down. That's too big. Use this one. And you could write the name of your Valentine or just Valentine. Um, another tip with these little, because these are quite a thin little piece of wood. I've got a gold pen and I'm just going to make the edges gold. And then once I've gone all the way around, I'm going to take it along the edge and just give it a little, just very, very gently. With the side of your pen give it a little bit of a gold edge on your paper how we doing for time we're all clear for now so that's our tag um and you can just i'll just poke it poke it through with so we can put that on a little bit of ribbon we can add that to our box as well right We'll go back to the um, base of the box, the bottom bit. Um, I've decided I quite like that, that on the bottom, I'm going to leave it. So but we just want to do a little bit of decoration just around the box itself. And what I'm going to do is with my heart, so this is the slightly larger heart that I cut out, I'm going to just do a little freeze of heart, slightly overlapping like that and I'm going to stick them down with the PVA so I'm going to go all the way around so I'm just going to do a stripe of the PVA across the middle of my box and stick my hearts on slightly overlapping I might need some more hearts again just a single stripe you can, they don't all have to be the same size. We can use um, some of the little hearts in between. Um, one of the script ones. Oh, it's not sticking. And I will go all the way around with that. I haven't got enough hearts cut out just now. Well, there's another one there. Again, a stripe, just a stripe across my PVA. And then I shall cut out another couple of hearts. I think I've used them all but ones I had. Find a nice paper. Uh, let's 
use this one. It's quite nice. Pays for the pound. I'll cut out another couple and then you'll be able to see what it looks like finished. One. Oh, I've got shiny one and I will maybe use this here for another one. So this is a Valentine's box because it's coming up to Valentine's Day. Um, but you don't have to, I mean, you could do it for anything. Christmas will be nice. Um, Christmas gift boxes are always a little bit expensive. I know we all, we're all very frugal and reuse every, <laughs> our gift bags. I always do anyway. Um, but yeah, reuse your gift boxes as well. Then. Right, so this is our final side. Put my stripe of, of glue. And then I will put that heart there. I'm going to put the, um, just need to be mindful of leaving the gap where the lid's going to sit on. And I'll put the little shiny heart in the middle. Okay. So you could tidy up the edges um, with a little bit of ribbon if you wanted to. But I'm quite happy that our edges look fine. Conscious now that the gold middle looks a little bit, it doesn't look torn but you know so oops. I am still thinking about ribbon should we put ribbon around the edge let's, let's put ribbon around the edge I, I might have another piece of that velvet this is my stash of red ribbons um, which are mostly pink okay let's go with the washi tape because there isn't quite enough of that there's a nice um this one i think it's got writing on um it says things like dream kiss that kind of thing so we'll have a look and see what that looks like i can't find the end because there is there's something else i want to quickly show you as well we'll leave this for now we'll think of something but i'm going to pop the lid on it and along with our little tag we made i love that i'm going to give this to my husband and say put my present in it he's not buying me a i told him not to buy me a present and not to buy me flowers. As, as an ex florist's daughter, I find flowers that um, at Valentine's very pretty. I like that. I'm really pleased with that. That's quite a modern take on it. You could use very vintage um, tissues and make a much more sort of vintage style box. But I'm very pleased with that. So I quickly wanted to show you something because this is quite feminine. I wanted to show you a more masculine take and using some slightly different materials, uh, thicker papers that are a bit more traditional but modern decoupage. Now, this is another box that I got, I had. I'm just gonna take the lid off. It was purple on the bottom and black lid. Now the lid I've left as it was because I really like that. But the box itself, I've covered this. This is uh, more of a craft paper rather than a tissue. And I've cut panels to fit and glued them on. Use the same method of gluing them on. And then this is washi tape because they, I wanted to cover right up to the edges to get rid of that purple. So when you pop the lid on it, you don't see the purple at all anymore. It's really quite nice, black and white and gold, very masculine. So to decorate it, I'm going to use the washi tapes. Now, 
the wooden hearts I showed you before, this is one of the bigger ones. And what I've decided to do is put stripes of the washi tape in a kind of um, decoupage fashion, going across it in diagonals like we did it earlier. I've lost one of the tape. It's a black one there is. Now I've got various different tapes in black and gold. And this is why I wanted to do it. That's the one I used on the inside of the box. So what I've done is the thicker ones, I'm putting stripes across. Um, I might put a stripe of this as well because I like this with the gold hearts on it. And I'm going diagonally across it and then I'm going to fill in the gaps with the um, narrower ones. And I'm just going right across. I'm not, I'm not um, trimming around the edges yet. So I've got some gold ones. That, this is quite a narrow one. So I'm going to put that in that space there and possibly in there as well because it's nice and narrow the other one's wider obviously because it's tape we don't need any glue but if you were using uh, paper to do this which you could do the same way as we did the um box lid you could um you'd have to put glue on it sorry my brain's not working again right and the last thing i'm going to do is put some of that gold there now it looks a bit of a hodgepodge at the moment but once i trim around the edges so then i'm going to just run my finger around the edges so i get a nice sharp definition of where the edge is and then i'm going to trim it so to trim it i'm going to oops stick into the table I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to go as close to the edge as I can with my scissors and trim all the way around. Trying to keep keep it nice and neat. Cut through the layers. It's difficult getting into the points, they're usually hard. I'm going to have to use my sharper ones. I don't want to use these because they're. Um, I don't want to get glue on them. But needs must. Because uh, it needs a sharp point. I have bits of tape stuck to my table now. And then I'll get rid of all these little odds and ends that are sticking me together. Pop them in the bin. So, and that's the heart. And if we rub around the edges, it'll just get those slightly jaggy edges smoothed out. So that's brilliant, isn't it? Lovely, I love that. And then all I'm gonna do is mount that on my box. So I'm having that as my bottom corner and that there as my top corner. I will use, probably use, uh, not use PVA for this because it's it's not very strong. I may use my glue gun, but that's a sort of more modern masculine tape on the same box. Slightly different method, um, but just as effective. So we've used lots of different crafting materials and lots of different techniques in this in this session. We've got two lovely boxes for our Valentines. I'll hold that one up slightly so you can see that. That one's slightly easier. Um, but as I say, a method that you can use on any cardboard box, even a shoe box, um, if you wanted a big one. Um, if the box is dark and you don't want it, a dark pattern in, then as I say, give it a base coat with white acrylic. I'm just going to pop the camera off. Okay, so well, I hope you have a lovely Valentine's Day. Um, it's my birthday at the end of the week as well, so I'm not. Um, we don't tend to celebrate Valentine's. It was my mum's birthday today and mine's four days later. So Valentine's falls exactly in the middle. But we'll, we'll exchange cards, but probably not gifts. Anyway, thank you for joining me. Um, thank you for putting up with my very croaky voice and my sneezing and sniffling. Hopefully when I see you next week, I'll, I'll feel a bit better. I'm coming back next Monday. I'm going to do uh, something for the children to do in half term. 
um so i will see you next week thank you very much for joining me